I've got a quick reminder before I start this tutorial. I'm now posting daily tips and tutorials. Subscribe if you don't want to miss any, and please leave a comment if you have any ideas about tutorials you'd like to see. I really need help with ideas of what to make next, so if you leave a comment, there's a really good chance that I'll make a video based on your suggestion. I heard that Google had added some new features to their iOS app, um, which they announced at the I.O. conference they recently held. So I downloaded the app, and when I launched it, I was greeted with this really nice sequence um, with gesture-controlled animations. And we're looking at a recording that I took off of my iPhone. To me, this looks like the perfect thing to try recreating inside of Flinto, just as a fun exercise to see how it would be done. So let me walk you through how I would recreate this animation inside Flinto for Mac. I've recreated all the screens for this interaction in Flinto. I've got one for each of the cards that we saw in that recording. And I just used text layers, rectangle layers, and a couple of screenshots for the card content that I took from the video to recreate these. One thing that's good to notice is that I use the same layer names across all the screens. Each screen has three groups. There's BG, card, and text. And text is this area at the bottom, and I put a white background in it because I want it to obscure this card as the card animates up. So I wanted the white background there to kind of cover that up. And each of the screens has those same three groups. And because each screen is very similar, it's got the same three groups with the same three names, that's going to allow me to reuse a transition across all of these. So I just need to set up the animation one time, and then I can reuse it. So let's start creating this transition. I'm gonna select the card on the first screen, click Create Link, and target the second screen. And this will be a up swipe gesture, and then I'll go ahead and create a new transition. Jumping into the Transition Designer, Right off the bat, I want to align the screens. So I'm going to click the Align Screens checkbox, and that puts the screens right on top of one another. And the next thing I want to do is have the Start screen be on top. So I'm just going to drag the screen in the layer list to the top of the layer list. So now at the start of the transition, I see the Start screen. Before I forget, I'm going to give this transition a name. All right, now if I jump over to the end of the transition, nothing changed. I'm still seeing the Start screen. And at the end of the transition, I should be seeing the end screen. So I need to hide the elements of the start screen until the end screen is revealed. I'll start with this text group. If I simply fade that out, the text of the end screen is revealed. So I've got a little crossfade that happens, and that part's taken care of. The next thing I want to do at the end of the transition is have this card slide off the top. So I'll just drag it up, scale it down a little bit, And now that part's taken care of. And the next thing to do is to fade out the background so that we reveal the other card in the other background of the, of the end screen. So we'll just fade that out. And there's the content from the end screen. So at this point, we have a transition that works because we go from seeing the complete start screen to the complete end screen. But we're not done. This card here needs to start underneath the text area and slide in. And because this card is on the end screen, I need to go to the start of the transition to modify it. So from the start of the transition, I'm gonna select that card, and you see I'm clicking through because the start screen layers are locked at the start, and there it is. I'm just gonna drag it down here below the text area and scale it up a little bit. All right, so we're almost there. The last thing, it's a kind of a small detail, but the blue background here slightly obscures this incoming card because it's fading out and the card is below it. And I want the card to be on top of both backgrounds. So the way I can do that is to take the card group in the layer list, drag it to the top of the layer list. So now it's on top of everything. But we don't want it to be on top of this text these text groups. So I'll select the two text groups in the layer list and drag those both on top of the card uh, up at the top of the layer list. Now those are obscuring the card so that it slides out from beneath them, but it's on top of the background layers. Cool, so I think this is working well. I've been holding shift as I toggle the transition to play it in slow motion. I think that the default easing here is a little bit too fast 
But that's okay because we're going to be controlling this with a gesture and not with a tap. So it'll, the speed will actually be determined by how fast you swipe. So I'm going to exit out of the transition designer and just put a backlink from this screen by pressing B. That's the shortcut for making a backlink. And I'll use a down swipe gesture because we're going back. Okay, time to check this out in the preview. I'm going to swipe up here and then swipe down to go back. And so the cards work, the background animation works, and the crossfade of the text is working. So this looks great, this is beautiful. Uh, let's go hook up this transition for the rest of the screens. And I'm gonna show you a fast way to do this. So this one's all set up, you can only go forward to the next screen. This one's half set up, you can go back to the previous screen, but you also wanna be able to go forward. So I wanna add an additional gesture to this link. And you can do that by going here in the inspector and choosing add gesture, but the shortcut is to hold shift and click create link. And you can see now I have a separate link line just for this one. And I'll target the next screen and choose up swipe and choose the transition that I created. So I don't need to recreate the animation. And because I've used the same layer names on both screens, it should apply all the animations automatically. And I don't even need to go into the transition designer at all. Let's just verify that that works. So now I should be able to swipe up to the next screen, the third screen, and swipe. Oh, I haven't put that backlink. So let's go here. And well, I need to put a backlink. And then I'm also going to need to put a forward link going to the next screen. But there's a quicker way to do this. Instead of manually creating both those links, I'm going to select the previous one and press Command Shift C. That's the shortcut for copy gestures. Then I'm going to click here on the next card and press Command Shift V to paste all the gestures of that link in here. Now I've got the same two gestures. One's a backlink, one has downswipe, one is upswipe. The only problem is when you paste the gesture, it pastes the exact same target. So I just need to retarget this upswipe link. Instead of going um, back to itself, I'm just gonna drag this and target the next screen in the sequence. Now I'll do the same thing here, Command Shift V, and then retarget this one so it goes to the next screen. And then one last one here, and then one last one here. I'll just paste in those links again. And for this one, I don't need the um, forward link, just the back link, because this is the end of the sequence. So the up swipe one, I'll just delete that in the inspector. All right, so now I've got all the links set up between these, and I only had to create the animation once. Let's open the preview and we can test out the whole thing. And there's the end. And we can go back. All right, I hope you enjoyed that one. I think that was a pretty cool uh, tutorial because it showcases Flinto's ability to reuse transitions, which can save you a lot of time. Remember, I'm posting new videos daily, so subscribe if you don't want to miss any.